What's up everybody, welcome back to the Unknown Codings channel. I've got a special video for you today, and it's on a topic that I get asked about a lot, which is chemical stripping. And I'm confident you guys are gonna like this video, so if you don't mind, go ahead and give me an early like and uh, hit that subscribe button. Now I'm sure most of you are already thinking, oh great, another methylene chloride stripper video. But it's not. I actually think this product is even better, and this would work great for both hobby coders and custom shops as well. Um, the product is actually EcoStrip from powderstrip.com. Uh, this product has changed the way that I think of paint removal. Um, this video is just part one in a series. I'm going to go ahead and show you kind of the entry level setup that Powderstrip sells, as well as some product demos and kind of my thoughts on this product, including my likes and dislikes. Uh, more of this video series will kind of show a progression going through expanding this setup to do larger parts or a lar larger quantity of parts. Um, but let's get into this video. Before we dive into the wonders of EcoStrip, uh, I kind of want to go over the shortcomings of traditional paint stripping methods. Uh, most, most methods often involve you know, harmful chemicals like methylene chloride. Now look, I love meth as much as the next guy. I love methylene chloride as much as the next guy. But I also felt its wrath to some degree. Um, and let's be honest, methylene chloride based strippers work great, but the smell the health hazards, the environmental hazards, um, they're all pretty brutal. Uh, you know, that's why the EPA is kind of working hard to stop production and use of methylene chloride based strippers. Uh, another downside with methylene chloride strippers is that you can damage underlying surfaces of the parts if you aren't careful. And then you have other methods, uh, which are just a little more time consuming, a little more labor intensive, and ultimately may damage the underlying surfaces. And that's where I think EcoStrip really comes in and shines. Now, a lot of you might have seen the video uh, comparing chemical strippers on this channel. And although the strippers were also from powderstrip.com, uh, EcoStrip was not in that video as it is a heated stripper. And I wasn't using anything to heat these strippers up. Uh, if you want to check that video up, or check that video out rather, I'll put it in a link in the description. Um, EcoStrip is a paint stripping system designed to be just really efficient and ultimately like sustainable. Um, it's a water-based biodegradable formula it safely removes multiple layers of paint from a variety of surfaces. Uh, I think kind of what sets it apart is its ability to dissolve the paint without damaging the substrate underneath, uh, making it ideal for delicate surfaces beyond metals, um, you know, wood, fiberglass, things of that nature. I know that this is a powder coating channel, so metal is kind of the ultimately the only thing that matters, but I get asked a lot about how to strip paint off of various substrates, kind of, I think, just because that's the nature of this channel to some degree. Uh, so I figured I'd at least mention that here. Um, this product is also safe on magnesium, so if you're doing a lot of Evo valve covers or Mercedes or BMW or any various magnesium parts, you know, this stuff is the jam. And, you know, that was always a big thing with, like, uh, rim strip or B17 or any methylene chloride based stripper is the fact that it could eat away at the aluminum or uh, magnesium more specifically. Setup is often kind of the scariest part for most people looking to get into chemical stripping and of course the biggest scare is the cost um, but I have some kind of good news with that it seems um, you know thanks to I would assume kind of the wonders of the internet the price for the setup keeps going down. Um, what you need to get started is pretty simple you're gonna need a steel drum uh, preferably an unlined steel drum. Uh, the one that I ended up with initially starting out with this project is a lined drum, but uh, it is now unlined as a result of having chemical stripper in it. Um, or you can go to like a stainless steel drum. Um, understand that the cost of the stainless drum is like a significant increase over the price of just a steel drum. Um, I'm going to link some drums kind of down below. They're about 150 bucks, maybe 135 bucks for a normal 55 gallon. Uh, the stainless ones are, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars uh, for the exact same size. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're gonna keep this size set up long term, then a stainless drum might be even better for you. Um, you know, a mild steel drum does have the potential to uh, corrode over time. Where the stainless one, you're not gonna have to worry about that, obviously. Now, some of you are probably asking, you know, what about like just the common plastic drum uh, that we've seen chemicals like this come in in the past? Uh, I mean, realistically, the answer is no. Uh, this product does require heat to work, and a plastic drum is not going to be your best option. Uh, you could likely get away with like a submersible heater and a plastic drum, uh, but those will end up kind of limiting your working room inside. Uh, plus, I don't know, there's something about hot chemicals in a plastic drum. I just doesn't make me okay recommending it. 
Um, I haven't asked Powder Strip if that works uh, because I obviously have this metal drum that we're going to be using, but I would look into it before you even consider that. Once again, you know, the limited space and then hot liquid in a plastic drum, something about that just feels wrong. Now, as far as drums go, the common steel and stainless steel, you know, 55 gallon drums are readily available most everywhere. I have seen used ones like on uh, Facebook Marketplace literally for free. Um, but I mean, I see them on there all the time for like 20, 30, 40 bucks. Just make sure that they're rust free before you get into them. You definitely don't want to start with one that is rusty, especially on the inside. Um, you can opt for things like a 85 gallon drum, or if you want to do small products, I guess they have like even like 30 gallon drums. Uh, they can be found all over as well. Uh, you know, Google is going to be your friend here, but I'm going to put some links down below um, in the description of this video to ones I have found. These aren't like affiliate links or anything. They're just links that I found kind of hoping to help you guys out. I don't get anything for sending you to their site. Uh, I've also never ordered from most of these other than uh, Powder Strip. That's the only one I've ever ordered this stuff from. So you're kind of on your own with the rest of this stuff. Outside of the drum, you're going to need, or the drum you're going to be stripping your parts in, you're going to need a drum heater like this one. Um, I've linked one in the description directly from Powder Strip's site. Uh, these are typically available at various outlets online, obviously. You can get them, you know, directly from them, or you can go find them online if you'd like to go that route. Uh, it's just called like a band heater, typically. Um, that's, of course, to heat the product, because um, EcoStrip does need heat to work effectively. Uh, it does work without heat, but it takes a lot longer, and I'm told that it can actually break down the product uh, using it unheated. I uh, don't know how true that is. I haven't ever tested it. I've only tested it heated. Um, there seems to be kind of some varying opinion on what temp is best. Uh, I've found that 150 degrees will take off pretty much anything. Uh, if you have some heavy epoxy primers like the ones found on European wheels, it does take a bit longer. Uh, or you can up your temperature to lower your overall like immersion time if you're gonna do like a you know epoxy based primer. Uh, the next thing you need is a, a rinse setup. Um, I've used these same 275 gallon totes with other chemical strip setups, and they're pretty much ideal for a spray off situation. You can also find these on Facebook Marketplace, ranging anywhere from you know free to 150 bucks used. Um, I've seen them. For sale, new, I can't imagine why anybody would buy a brand new one to do this, but if you want to, I'm sure they're available online. They're probably a couple hundred dollars. I think Uline even sells them. Uh, I don't have a link for any of those, but those are ones that you guys can definitely find. They're 275-gallon totes, super easy to Google. Um, keep in mind that you will need to drain these occasionally, though, uh, depending on how often you use your strip setup. Uh, beyond that, you're going to want some kind of like basic safety stuff, like gloves, goggles, uh, or maybe like a face mask if you want to protect your whole face. Um, a respirator for the chemicals. Now, to be fair, these are non-toxic. They're not going to wreck your life like some of the methylene chloride-based strippers will do. Uh, but the smell isn't great. Um, it doesn't stink as bad as some of the other strippers. It's just, uh, it almost has like kind of an ammonia-ish smell, like a sweet, sickly smell is probably the best way I could describe it. Um, not terrible to be around, but when it's hot and you're standing above it, it can be a little aggressive at times. So I would definitely get yourself like a decent respirator. Uh, and then probably like an apron because you don't want it to get splashed all over you. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can bathe in this stuff, but I will say that if you get it on your skin, a simple wash with some soap is the move to get it off of you. Um, it doesn't burn your skin or anything like methylene chloride based stripper. Uh, but do consider that it's going to be fairly hot when you're dealing with it. So, I mean, the heat alone is going to burn you. Um, if you want to get kind of bougie about it, you can add an electric pressure washer to your list of setup. Um, this will just kind of help you get any stubborn paint or powder off your part, though I admit you likely won't need it for most projects. It's just like a useful addition of the tool, or an addi a useful additional tool. Um, you can also get one of those, you know, at like a Harbor Freight or something for a hundred bucks or less. So this is, you know, of course, kind of like an entry level setup, but it's good for doing, you know, bike frames, uh, you know, dirt bike frame, motorcycle frames, uh, quad frames, if you want to flip it over, of course. Uh, I put 20 inch wheels in this with no issue. I think a 21 will actually fit, but it might be kind of a pain to get in and out. Um, I think, you know, for the garage guys and even smaller shop setups, this, is, this particular route is perfect. Uh, but of course, I'm going to have some follow up videos to where I show, uh, you know, larger setups also use an eco strip. So look forward to those. I do kind of want to go over kind of the benefits of using EcoStrip. Uh, you know, first and foremost, it's safe to use, unlike most of the traditional stripping methods. 
Uh, Eagle Strip's non-toxic, has no harmful fumes. Um, you know, I mean, it's not bad for you. It's not bad for the environment. Uh, it significantly reduces the time and effort required for paint removal, which obviously is good on its own. Um, it's a cost-effective solution, ultimately. I mean, the chemical itself is pretty expensive to start out with, but, you know, you can use it for a really long time, way longer than rim strip. Um, it's great for, you know, professionals and, you know, DIY enthusiasts, you know, whatever the case is. Uh, this channel kind of has like a mixed bag. There's lots of people who have big shops. And there's lots of people who are, you know, just starting out powder coating or want to get started powder coating. And I think this is a great option for either option or either person. I think ultimately it's like kind of versatility across different surfaces and the fact that it's eco-friendly kind of make it like the best choice for anyone seeking, you know, a good paint stripping solution. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, polished or brushed surfaces are not affected by eco strip. Uh, so if you have a candy finish that's over like a polish or a brushed aluminum, um, something along those lines, you can strip it and keep that finish. I know with methylene chloride based strippers that typically will etch the surface to some degree and kind of get rid of your polished or brushed surface. Um, another cool thing is as this product starts to break down, there is like a booster additive that you can order from powder strip to make it, you know, extra spicy all over again. That'll save you from having to order another journal product earlier than necessary. Uh, there is one downside that I've found to this product, and this is not a big deal. This is more just I had to find some negatives about this uh, to make it, you know, reasonable for this video. It doesn't take stickers off. Um, it seemed like it took wheel weight adhesive off, like the tape from wheel weights that we have to deal with, obviously, in the powder coating world. But, like, the stickers that are on the barrels, it, it kind of ate away at them, but it didn't seem like it removed them. Now... I only noticed that on a set of wheels that I had left in there for only about 15 minutes. Uh, there's a chance that had I left them in there longer that it would have stripped them entirely. Uh, I only had it on those one, you know, the stickers rather on this one set. And like I said, only 15 minutes in there. Uh, it might have been actually less. I think it was actually 12 minutes in the tank um, at around 145 degrees was what it was when I put them in. Um, so it's just one thing to consider if you're going to be using this, maybe just knock the stickers off or peel the stickers off or get most of the sticker off i'm sure that that'll make your life a little bit easier uh, i'm sure with everything you know me kind of doing this voiceover style video and all the you know stuff that's going on in the video plus the text that i'm putting up on the screen is going to make this kind of be a lot of information to take in and i do apologize for that i didn't want to explain everything that was going on in the video which is why i put the text in there and then also do like this voiceover style where I'm explaining the product and what I like and dislike. Um, mostly because I didn't want this video to be like a 30 minute long video. So what that's going to result in, I'm sure, is you guys are going to have a lot of questions about this setup. Uh, and that's actually perfect because I plan on making a follow up video to this one very soon, answering all the questions that you guys have. So if you do have a question, uh, drop down into the comment section, uh, ask a question. Or you can email me if you want to do that. Um, I know that some people prefer to email me rather than ask in here. I've actually had one guy tell me he didn't want to look stupid. Uh, I'm a big believer there aren't really any stupid questions here. So if you got a question, feel free to ask. But if you don't want to do it in the comments so people can see it, just shoot me an email. Email is uh, here and also down in the description down below. Um, I'll be sure to include all of your guys' questions in the next video. Uh, answering them as in-depth as I could possibly do. Uh, and I hope this video was helpful. You know, once again, I'm providing links down below for the product page for powder strips so you can get most of this set up, as well as some other links to various products I think you guys may find helpful uh, when setting this all up. Um, you know, to me, honestly, this was a game changer as far as paint stripping goes. Um, it's absolutely like my go-to solution for stripping now. And follow-up videos showing how to expand this setup are, of course, going to be coming. So if you look at this setup and you don't think it's big enough for you, uh, you know, good news is there's bigger setups on the way. So, and like always, if you guys are interested in powder coating or just find videos like this interesting, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Uh, it certainly helps get my videos in front of more people. Uh, if you're looking for even more powder coating content, be sure to sign up for the UKC Army Facebook group where there are thousands of members in there helping people with powder coating questions daily. It's been awesome. Uh, I appreciate your guys' time and look forward to the next video.